Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for lending me your ears. And if you're watching this on the video platform, thank you for also lending me those eyeballs. Today, I'm going in a totally different direction. We're going to talk about introverts. And I got my man who just launched, or is going to launch his new book on January 19th, Matthew Pollard. Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast. How are you doing? Mate, I'm ecstatic to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, because we keep it real here, man. So this is our third attempt at doing this interview. Our internet connections have just not been the greatest. And uh, it's going to happen, right? Matthew, this is going to happen. This is really happening, right? Well, you and I have both had internet upgrades since then. So I feel at this stage, it's either the planets are never going to align or this is going to be the best interview we've ever had. I mean, who's ever practiced three times for an interview? That's right. I'm going with the latter, Matt. So, Matthew, let the folks know, my sales influence tribe, let them know who you are, a little background, and then we'll jump into the conversation about introverts. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, my name's Matthew Pollard. I'm known as the rapid growth guy. And my background is I learned as an introvert to sell by really horrible state of affairs, but I lost my job just before Christmas. The only job I could get was door-to-door -door, door -door sales. And I literally had no sales training, five days of product training, and literally told to go and sell. And literally it was a battle. I mean, it was 93 doors before my first sale, rejections, getting sworn at, getting told to get a real job. It was horrible. And long story short, I taught myself how to sell watching YouTube videos, became really, really good at it, and actually got promoted a bunch of times, became the number one salesperson in the company, and then went off to start my own businesses. And I've been responsible for five multi-million dollar success stories. But the real point of what I try to inspire people with is that you know I'm an introvert that had no business being in sales, and I became the best at it, which is what my first book was on. And my second one, I mean, I moved to the United States where I didn't know anyone, and less than a year later, I was invited to events as one of the most connected people in the city. And now I'm one of the most connected people, according to a lot of online websites across the world. And it all came from the networking process that I now teach. Isn't that something? And even if you talk funny, do you know what I mean? It still happens for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I hope everybody can listen to it, at least the th every third word. You know, I've, <laughs> I've learned to speak slower because Australians speak really, really quickly, which is why, you know, I listen to all my books on Audible. And I have to tell you, I listen to it three times speed because it just seems like a normal pace for me. But I've learned <laughs> to just chill out and calm down when I speak from stage. I love that. I love that. By the way, I think somewhere in the, somewhere in your future, you should write a book called 93 Doors. I just wrote that down. 93 Doors, you know, the trials and tribulation right. of the doors. Yeah, you should, you should write right. that book, man. Yeah, I, you, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I when, I when I think about the books that I have in me, you know, The Introvert's mm -hmm. Edge is, is a series, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting. Everyone's like, what's the next one in the series? What's the next one in the series? And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I really want to write, you know, Maccas to Millions. By the way, McDonald's is what, you know, in Australia, we call it Maccas. Uh, that's the kind of our Australian slang for that. So I'm like, I really want to write Maccas to Millions. 93 Doors sounds like a really good book. Everyone's like, what's the next Introvert's Edge? And you know what? I'm fine with that because I feel like there's no literature for introverts to show them that they can be successful. I mean, by the way, for everyone listening, just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you can't sell, you can't network, you can't speak from stage, you can't be an amazing leader. It just means that when you do those activities, it depletes your energy. As a matter of fact, I believe that introverts actually can be better networkers, salespeople, presenters, leaders than most extroverts out there because they plan, they prepare, they're more empathetic, they're great listeners. There's a lot of value in what introverts have to offer. The problem is we just have this false belief that because we don't have this gift of gab, which is an absolute most ridiculous notion, talk about fake news, we don't do it. We feel like we can't do it. We don't even try. And that's why I'm so passionate about getting people past that point so that they know that they can succeed in all these so-called extroverted arenas. And I love that. I want to start with the 93 doors, you know, because I know that I have a lot of introverts who listen. And I love the fact that you've just plainly stated that it's a myth that introverts can't sell. And I agree with you 100%. When you were getting rejected, you know, those 93 times, or 92, got it on 93, you know, you know, walk us through a little bit of your mindset because you, you were thrown into a position, you're not really trained in selling. What kept you going? What did you do? How did you adjust? I mean, just walk us through it. 
Well, it wasn't a fun time. I think everyone listening can probably mm. understand that it was it was horrific. I mean, what happened? And for those people that are hearing about me for the first time, my background is I had a pretty significant reading disability growing up. I mean, I you know I had I got diagnosed with dyslexia, or I should say misdiagnosed. And then when I was sixteen, I got diagnosed with this thing called Erlen syndrome, which basically means I put on a funny pair of glasses, and miraculously I can learn to read. Now I couldn't read like everyone else, but I could start the process of learning to read. Now, so for me, the last two years of high school were an absolute hustle and I got into the top 20% of my state, but I was just, I was exhausted. So for me, my whole family agreed that there was no way that I was going to make it at university if I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was going to take a year off to just find myself, right? So I took a job at a real estate agency and I wasn't the guy out selling, I was the guy in the back office doing data entry with that look on my face, like, don't speak to me, I'm here to find myself, right? So here I am and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I lose my job like literally three weeks in because they decide to shut this office. And I'm like, so I didn't choose to go into commission only sales. What happened was I went, well, okay, I've got an option now. I've promised my family I'm gonna support myself. My dad broke his back 80 hours a week. Am I really gonna go home and say, I lost my job three weeks in? And the answer was absolutely not. So I pulled out the classifieds and there were three jobs. And all of them, I mean, this was Christmas time. Like for people that don't know Australia, everything's kind of opposite. The toilet's been the wrong way. The weather's always different, right? It's summer and Christmas at the same time. No one's hiring. I mean, we're going away on the 20th of December. No one's coming back to the 15th or 20th of January. I mean, it's summer and Christmas, right? Who's hiring? So the only jobs I could get, commission only sales, I applied for all three and I'm like, all right, this is pretty good. I got three interviews. Oh, this is good. I got three job offers. Well, it turns out they just hire everyone, right? Commission only sales. My manager said, we just throw mud up against the wall and see what sticks, which sounds fun until you realize you're the mud. So going into that first door, I think is the first big mindset point, right? A lot of people probably just decided not to walk in. I mean, I was in a training group of 20 and two people came back, including me for day two. So some people probably just went, no, I'm not doing it. For me, I took a deep breath, I walked in, and luckily, I guess, I was politely told to leave. Then I was sworn at, then I, I mean, my personal favorite was always go get a real job, because I just couldn't get, a I mean, it, this was the only job I could get. So for me, though, I kept thinking that this is what I promised that I would do. And I think this is important for everyone listening. I mean, let's face it, the world's not that tough anymore, right? I mean, it used to be, you know, if you didn't have a job, it meant starvation. But these days, you'll get handouts, you know, you'll still have a roof over your head, you're probably going to have better connect internet connection than the two of us, you know, four weeks ago. So you, life isn't that tough. So what happens is you go, Oh, I don't like this. So I'm not going to do it. For me, I went, I put my literally and I, I guess not. I mean, it wasn't a reality. If I had gone home and said, Dad can't do this, he would have been disappointed, which was probably worse, but he would have been okay with it. But for me, I went, I am not going home to tell my father that day one was too tough. I'm not going back. So I went into the next door. I went into the next door. And, you know, it was, I mean, 93 doors. I mean, it was close to five o'clock by the time I made that sale. But I think that what I realized at that point is the world's never really worked for me. You know, when, I mean, I had a reading disability growing up that was misdiagnosed, everything was always hard. And because of that, you know, without my mother going, I am not willing to accept dyslexia because he's not, you know, reacting well to any of the, the suggested ways to, tr to study, I'm gonna go find something else. Unless she said, I'm not willing for him to fit in this box because it's not working, I would never be where I am today. And I just have carried that in everything that I've done. So when it was 93 doors, I went, well, what would most people do? Well, most people would either just give up, which is what 18 people in my training group did, or they would do the opposite, which is, I mean, let's face it, so many people are so excited about that hustle mentality. I'll just grind it out. That's, you know, we're proud of it. Well, grind it out, fine, but no, have a great system. So what I decided, is that if I was gonna grind it out, my year was gonna suck. I mean, it would be you know 105 doors, 120 doors, 43 doors before my next sale the next day. And I'd always be saying, well, that was a lucky day. That was an unlucky day. And I went, no, sales had to be a system, i.e. I'm not mm. willing to accept these two parts put in front of myself. So that's so, why I tried. So, so Matthew, I don't mean to cut you off, but you're, we, when we got in, into the first two interviews that failed, right? You said something, and before, because I know where you're going now, and I, and it was so. What you said was so impactful to me personally. I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up your backside. It was, it was so impactful to me that I go, wow, what a deep concept. But before we get to that, uh, 
I, I want to highlight something here because you, you, you like, you like, you, you epitomize it. That people always say you have to have a lot of confidence, but I was always like, I'm always taking commitment over confidence. If you say you got to choose one, and I think the the fact that you told yourself, I'm not going back home and tell my dad this or my father this or you know disappoint my mother. It's like you make a commitment to go forward. It's almost like burning your boats, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, how many people start a business, go into their garage and disappear for like six months, a year? And I mean, they don't even go out and validate their idea, which drives me nuts, right? They've committed their entire family income, their livelihood, their future success on an idea. Everyone says go and validate, but they don't because they're not willing to lead to that commitment. Then they get out of their garage and either find out no one actually wants that idea, which is horrible, mm -hmm. Or they never leave their garage. They think they can just put up a landing page, throw ads at it, and it will mm. work. And they go, oh, it didn't work. Would you have to give up? Yeah. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars lost, families broken up. It's not acceptable. All because people aren't willing to say, no, I'm putting a line in the sand. I'm going to make this work. Now, of course, validate the idea before you do that. But once you've validated, charge forward. And that's what I did. I mean, I, I saw other people succeeding in commission only sales. The only decision I made is the only difference I could see is that I was an introvert. And I assumed because I found out later that some of those people were introverted, that I was able to do it too. That was it. And I drove forward. Now, I, I want to tell you how you impacted me. Like few, few people have come on the podcast and you, you walk away going, huh, Thank you for that. So I thank you for what I'm about to tell you that you taught me, right? And it was just a way of looking at it. It's almost like sometimes you don't have to shift somebody completely. Just give them a 1% degree or one degree shift and they see something, right? And I'm like, and so you said something, which is I know you're going to get into right now. And I'm going to let you go all you want on this, but I want to highlight this. This is so big. You said something. You said, Victor, you says, I learned, and then you're, you're going to shape this for me, okay, after I stated it. You said, there's me, the person, and then I said, I have a process that stands aside from me. He says, and I don't, you know what I'm saying? And when you said that, I go, what do you mean? He goes, when something doesn't go right, it's not so much the person, it's something about my process that I need to get right. It's not me. And I, it was one of those things that hit me later as I reflected on the conversation, cut short as it might have been. I was like, you know, he's right. He said, too often people take it personally. And the way you stated it is that you make it, you look at your process and how can we improve that? Oh, so absolutely. walk me through this point. Well, so going back to, you know, and I, and I think like, imagine for a second, you were a car manufacturer. If you had a couple of bad vehicles that came off the line, you wouldn't go, oh my gosh, I was never meant to build cars. You would just go, there's something wrong with the process. And that's what I discovered when it came to sales. For me, I went, walked away from that day saying, I'm not willing to accept relying on lady luck and it just to go through that grind. So sales has to be a system. And I went, okay, so how am I gonna learn this system? And I went, all right, I could pick up a book by say Zig Ziglar or Brian Tracy, and neither of them, by the way, pr profess to be introverted or extroverted. Brian Tracy, extrovert. Zig Ziglar, by the way, probably the most well-known, an introvert, which surprises a lot of people. But what I said is I went away and I started to look for options. And you know, picking up one of their books, I mean, it would've taken me a year to read it, let alone apply it. So what I actually did, and this was before podcasts exist, gosh, I would have killed for those back then, but I discovered YouTube and what I typed in was a sales system and all these videos came up and I focused every day on one element of that process. And that's right, it is a process. And all of a sudden I got better. You know, it was, I'd focus on one element and I'd spend eight hours practicing and then the next day I'd go out and I'd apply that. And that worked, that didn't work. And then I'd go back and watch more videos. And I just did that day after day. So there were two things. One was I focused on every element. And by the way, sales is not like mixed martial arts. Don't learn multiple systems. Pick one and focus on that until you get all the kinks out. Then you can add on all the bells and whistles. I mean, even Henry Ford said you can have any car, color <clears throat> car you want as long as it's black because he didn't want to add Correct. bells and whistles until the car worked. But the second thing was for me, I decided that if it was this tinkerable system of steps, then a rejection wasn't about me. It had no reflection on me whatsoever. So as an introvert, I didn't have to get upset. But I mean, if you're winging it like extroverts flying by the seat of your pants, of course the rejection's about you because it's what you said that made them decide not to 
want to work with you or not to buy your product. But as an introvert or as an extrovert with the system, you can say, okay, what specifically in the process went wrong there? How do I improve it? What do I fix? How do I tinker with it to get it to be more optimum? Now, sure, some people are going to say no to you, but you know, Henry Ford probably has, well, I think in continuous improvement, they talk about the lowest number of defects per part per, you know, parts per million, right? So when you're thinking about it like that, all of a sudden it stops being personal. You walk out and go, what went wrong with the process? rather than why didn't he like me or why did he say no it changes everything and that's you know why I just had this skyrocketing change in my sales ability you know literally it took me six weeks to go from having no business in sales to my manager pulling me into the office gosh I thought I was in trouble he pulled me and he had this puzzled look on his face <laughs> and he's like Matt we just got the national sales report and it, it's like we just turns out you're the number one salesperson in the company six weeks from going from no business being in sales to realizing it's a system and just learning that process. Did, were you ever nervous when you were talking to people out of curiosity? You know, the first time where you were trying to work out the process, you're smiling, so I, I say, yeah, I think yes, go ahead. I still get nervous now. I'm nervous talking to you, right? What if you ask me a question I'm not expecting? But the difference mm -hmm. is my nerves have subsided greatly and the level of practice that I, that I put into each one of these podcasts goes down greatly because I'm well, practice now. I mean, this will be my 150th, probably 160th podcast. By the time you get to your 20th door and you're, you're feeling a little bit more confident, it's it, and then by the time you get to the 90th door, you're feeling more confident. Of course, you can also feel more beaten down if it's not going well, right? So for me, what I found is by the time I got to you know three, four, five weeks in, I would get nervous before the first door. I'd have to psych myself up and I'd, I'd always have these feelings like, what if today's gonna be different? What if my luck's going to run out? But then once I went to the first door and I ran the process, it was like all of a sudden it was comfortable. And what I realized is sales is just like a muscle. I mean, there's all these, uh, dating specialists that are like, you know, re walking up to a person in a bar and asking for a phone number or asking them out is like a muscle. You have to warm it up. Same with sales, same with networking. For me, you know, the first time I did a virtual keynote presentation, gosh, it was nerve wracking. The first time I spoke on stage, I mean, I bounced around that stage like I was a goldfish that forgot that I'd hit the other wall three seconds ago. And it was terrifying. But by the time I did my fifth or sixth, now I always do a warm up keynote where no one's watching before I go and do a live one if I haven't done one for a few weeks. Because then I know I can nail it and the, nothing, there's nothing that really affects me. Now sure, I do get a little bit nervous beforehand, but I think that's completely natural. And I actually think it's mm -hmm. positive because I get this adrenaline rush that allows, I mean, that adrenaline mi mixed with the passion that I have for what I do is this explosive experience for anyone that sees me on stage and hopefully anyone that's watching right now. I love that. The, the fact that you tied the passion piece in as something you feel strongly about. And by the way, so, so today I wore a hoodie. If you're not, if you're not watching the uh, video, I'm wearing a hoodie right now. And there's only one reason I decided to wear a hoodie for this conversation. <laughs> because in your book, the new book, The Extrovert's Edge, The Edge, right? I'm just going to call it The Edge if you don't mind. I'm not going to be offending Absolutely. you, right? So in The Edge, I read that story. And I want you to tell Joel's story. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Joel's, I mean, as you know, Joel's the reason why this was the, the reason for why this book had to come next. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we had, I mean, the first book on sales, I mean, it did over 40,000 copies. It's been translated into over 10 languages now, and it's won all these awards. I mean, HubSpot listed as one of the most highly rated sales books of all time. Book Authority listed it as the number two book ever written for introverts. And so, I mean, I didn't need to write another book anytime soon. It was doing really well, and I probably could have chilled out for a few more years. And But I did have a lot of people saying, Matt, we're doing so well closing deals now, we need more leads. And I was thinking about it, but then I got on this phone call with a guy called Craig Turner. And Craig, you know, has been a long-term supporter of me. And he wanted to he wanted to reach out to let me know that he left the first book on the coffee table at his family home. And his son, who is crazy introverted, and yes, as you mentioned, the hoodie, like would go to school, hoodie over his head, look at his shoes most of the time, never really had any conversations with anybody. But he, he's always been interested in his dad's business books. He picked this book up and he read it. And he carried the book around with him for like a month at school. And he realized that because what he thought is if sales can be systemized, something as uncomfortable as selling, maybe making friends could be systemized as well. So he took a book on systemizing sales and he leveraged it to make friends. And he started dialogues that he controlled with, friend, with, with, with some of the popular 
popular kids. There's now a girl in the picture. He's actually a popular kid now. The hoodie's <laughs> off. Everything has changed. And that's why yeah. I knew that the next book had to be The Introvert's Edge to Networking because I can't believe that so many introverts fail at developing friendships, to fail, fail at developing influencer relationships, get the supporters that they deserve for their businesses, all because they think it's something that they can't do. As a matter of fact, they run away from it because they think it's something they can't do. Yeah, so two things. One, I think you should get, you should brand a hoodie. You should get your own brand, a red, a red hoodie, you know, call it, you know, whatever, the introvert's hoodie. And that's that should be the uniform for people who come to see you speak. I think number two, I think from, from a speaker standpoint, from a speaker to a speaker, if I may suggest, this is such a great story that if you're not incorporating it in your presentations, shame on you, because it really is a great story. So I love it. Oh, oh, it absolutely will be. You know, it's funny. It's every interview mm -hmm. that I've had. It's okay. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I understand this sales part. It's really interesting. Move on. Let's talk about Joel every single time. It's, it's that story. <laughs> you know, what's funny it's is a, even now I start telling my story. And yeah, yeah, we get it. You're great. Talk to me about Joel. <laughs> Joel. Yeah. That, I want to know about that guy because you know what it is, is that we see Joel in our heads. Like today we see, you know, Matthew, but Matthew is no longer probably viewed as an introvert because you're, you know what I mean? You, you can, you can talk now. So, and the reason I think Joel comes to mind is because people imagine what that it's almost like when you read a book and you have the visual in your head and when they show you the movie you're like eh, i don't like the movie let's go back to the visual in the book and i think that's why joel's always in their head so i think that's an important point to make i mean so many people project extroversion onto anyone that they see is successful i know that i do it myself you know i mean one thing i should probably say i mean there are introverted, what I call introverted titans everywhere. You look at Alan DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, both introverted. You look at uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Bill Murray, that famous comedian that you see on Groundhog Day that we love, that can't stick to a script, is an introvert. Tom Hanks, introverted. Some of the biggest CEOs, some of the best leaders, you know, people like Zig Ziglar, Ivan Meisner, the founder of BNI, introverted. The thing is that what happens is we see someone that's being successful and we go, oh, it's easy for them. They're just naturally an extrovert. I know I do it all the time. You know, I remember when I, I spoke, one of my first US keynotes was for a good friend of both of ours, actually. Uh, Gerhard runs a, a conference called, uh, well, he has a magazine called Selling Power Magazine, and he has a, a conference that he calls uh, the, the uh, 3.0 conference. And he, you know, for me, when I spoke from his stage, I saw another speaker that spoke from his stage. And I'm like, wow, one day I hope to be as good as this person. And what's funny is afterwards, I got talking to him and I found out that he was an introvert too. I would have absolutely known in my head that he was an extrovert, but no, he was an introvert. So we've got to stop doing this. We've got to stop seeing someone that's successful and projecting extroversion upon them. The only difference between an introvert and an extrovert is how they draw their energy. It doesn't mean that someone can't be amazing at you know, being on a podcast interview like this, it just means that at the end of it, I'm going to be tired and I'm going to want to put on my hoodie and chill out and watch Netflix for a little bit of time, as opposed to an extrovert that'll want to do the next one and the next one and the next one, right? When you fuel what you do with passion and you have a great system and a great strategy, you can do anything as an introvert. And I would say that I tend to stick within the boundaries of what I do well, much better than most extroverts on podcasts. And because of that, I get my message across clearer, more concisely, and in a much more regimented way, which means I'll get better and better at it every time yeah. I do one. I wanted to highlight something that I know we talked about. I think we talked about it in the other one. I, w I was an introvert, officially, an introvert all my life. Uh, uh, well, to like 17 or 18. Not, but I met somebody uh, while I was working at a, my summer job. And she was such an extrovert, right? She could just, she was, that's her. And I remember I would just study her. Now, I had the benefit of working with her for three months, like right next to her. So I was there and I, I absorbed, learned. And that's, I, I give credit to her for pulling me out of my shell. What do you say to people about... You know, if they don't have that person standing next to them all the time for three months, I think I lucked out. But when you talk about mentors and coaches, you know, for extroverts, you know, give me something on that. So 
You're right, you were lucky. I mean, a lot of people don't have that. But in truth, a lot of people don't need that either. I mean, it's funny how many people I see spend thousands of dollars on programs because they feel like they need help. I learned to sell watching YouTube videos, right? I learned to network through trial and error and by watching videos and studying podcasts. There's so much free resources out there these days. You can be immersed by people that can teach you the skills and strategies that you need. The one thing that I find is most people, unless they are lucky and have someone next to them, just don't. They go home, they switch on the TV and they go, life's hard nothing I can do about it. So what my suggestion would be is that for people that are that are watching and they say, oh, you know, it's easy for Matt, you know, he, he, he just happened to fall in sales young, or, you know, it's easy for that person because, you know, they started leadership young, or like you, they, you know, they were, they were standing next to someone that they learned the strategies from. I would say it's probably harder to learn from an extrovert because there's a lot of things that they do that you can't do. You know, you've got to find a strategy that works for you, but by trial and error, you go, oh, that works for me, that doesn't work for me what you didn't do is say oh I can't do it and that was that was important but what I would really suggest to people is that both you and I have found strategies that work for us and it would be easy for us both to say oh I was introverted and now I'm more extroverted what it is is because we we don't we're not terrible at podcast interviews selling speaking it doesn't take as much of our energy because if you take that mental angst out of the fear of rejection, that uncomfortability that comes with feeling like you're selling and you don't know what you're saying and the fear about just being in the wrong place and feeling inauthentic, feelings and negative feelings, I should say, take so much more energy than just being present with people. So by knowing what you're going to say and making every sale or networking event feel like Groundhog Day to you while it feels organic and authentic to the person that is listening to you speak and you're having that dialogue, that's gonna be far less draining for you, which means you can do it more and more. So you're actually not becoming more extroverted. As a matter of fact, if you try to be completely extroverted, you'll feel uncomfortable, inauthentic, and you'll get tired. But finding a process that works for you in an authentic way that where you feel congruent as an introvert will deplete your energy much less, and it'll make you feel like you're becoming more extroverted. What actually it is, is you're an introvert, you still get tired, you're just less exhausted mm -hmm. by the activities. That's a good, that's a really a good way of putting it. And, and, and by the way, as, as, as I'm listening to you, you said something earlier that when I had uh, this person next to me, I had to be cognizant of the fact that there's certain things that she did that I knew weren't me. So I cherry picked what I thought I could use, which is what you're saying, right? Take what you Absolutely. like when you study YouTube videos, you probably found some videos. Ah, that's not me. I can't do that. That's not that's not doesn't feel natural. Oh, absolutely. you know, and I'm always I was going to tell me what you think of this line because I've always loved this Bruce Lee line because he came up with his own fighting style. And he said the following. He said, absorb what is useful discard what is not, and then add what is uniquely yours. And Absolutely. I just thought that was the perfect blend, which is really what you're saying. Absolutely. I mean, I believe that everyone has their own unique experiences, upbringing that perfectly qualify them to help a demographic of people, but also allow them that well, they have to find a system that will work for them. So for instance, my, my first book talks about a sales system. My second book talks about a networking system. And of course, what I would suggest is a lot of people try and reinvent the wheel when they first start. They're like, oh, I need to figure out a system. Don't start from the ground up. I mean, I had to because no one was talking about being an introvert, right? So I had to start from the ground up, but you don't, right? If you're an extrovert, go and learn a system by, that's built for extroverts, right? Brian Tracy's got some great books. There's a ton of other great extroverts that do, right? I'm excited to see there's so many people standing up now in the sales world, like Jeb Blunt, who wrote the forward for my, my next book that says, I'm an introvert too, just so you know, right? Everyone's willing to admit it now because it's no longer, you're not going to get shunned from the sales or networking or speaking community by saying you're an introvert, which I'm excited about. But yes, if even if you are stuck next to an extrovert that you don't want to be like, but there are qualities and things that you can see, exactly, take on what you like, discard what you don't, and continue forward. But again, the important thing is that what, start with the base level system. Perfect that first. Then, once you've got that structured, you know, sales, networking, speaking from stage, it's not like a science, it's like a science experiment, sorry. So you don't want to change multiple things at once, just like a science experiment. You won't know what's blowing up in your face. So change one thing at a time, see if it works, makes it better, makes it, you know, not, not work as well, and then either change it back or move to the next thing. When you do that, you'll always get gradually better and better. But the thing that I want you to know, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I hate sales technique, like bulldog technique. 
techniques, hard closes, they don't work for me. So I had to find a process that didn't have that. When in networking, I don't want to lead in and say, oh, I'm a business coach or I'm a sales trainer, because then people will say, oh, I had one of those, it didn't really work out. And what now I've got to say, oh, but I'm different. I've got magic ruby slippers. Or, you know, they'll say, oh, I, I need a marketing coach. I mean, it's what happens, right? Oh, I need a marketing coach. You know, um, how much are you? What, now I've got to talk about price? Neither of no. those are happy experiences for me. So I found a way of framing it differently where people go, oh, I've never heard of that before. What exactly mm -hmm. is that? That works for me as an introvert. Right, and I, and I love the way, in a sense, you basically made the world conform to how you are. I mean, if you think about it, right? You're not trying to conform to the way the world is. Just say, let me tell you what works for me. Uh, you know, it's, you, you've done a book on sales. You've done now this book on networking, right? And so I would think that the natural progression, I'm pushing you here a little bit, would probably be leadership. What do you think? You know, it's, it's interesting. So there are a couple of books that, that come to mind, but for me, I'm also not in, incredibly focused on me being the author of all of them either. What I think we've mm -hmm. created is a, so my books, they don't read, they, they read but more like become, novels. Matthew, you become, you're, you're going to become whether you like it or not. I know you're the rapid growth guy, but I'm going to still view you as the introvert guy. Like if I, <laughs> if I got some, you know what I mean? And it, it's, it's something that you become the face of. And Absolutely. that's a beautiful thing, man. And I'm very happy to be the face of the cause. Don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. There are there are other people that started well before me. People like Susan Cain, who wrote the book Quiet. I wouldn't exist without people like that that crafted out the industry. So sure. I don't want to. I don't need to say I'm, I'm the face of the brand. I am passionate about this. I want to see it progress, and I want to see introverts all over the world, you know, confront that stigma around introversion and realize that they're not second class citizens. Their path to success is just different to that of an extrovert. And when they embrace that, they'll make amazing networkers, sales people leaders and you're right so yes there are some some books that are on the forefront of what will come next you know the introverts edge to leadership the introverts edge uh, to nailing your next interview the introverts edge to speaking from stage presenting there are lots of different topics and you know I mean at the moment we have to get through the exhaustion of what it takes to write a book and launch a book and then we'll decide what the market's really calling for but also I'm I, I'm not as uh, egocentric enough to believe that I'm going to be the master of every topic. For instance, I'm probably not going to be the person that writes the introvert's edge to parenting. I'm probably not going to be the person that writes the introvert's edge to selecting the right candidates for, for you know, in interviews. But I'm very, very comfortable to know that there is going to be someone that's going to be amazing at that, that's going to be willing to work under the format of making it like a novel so that it's not this kind of hardcore, you have to do this. Because let's face it, it's con confrontational enough for a lot of introverts to learn these skill sets. The last thing mm -hmm. you want to do is make it not fun. So I like people to laugh out loud with mm -hmm. stories and they enjoy it like a novel while learning the techniques that allow them to be successful in their lives. I love that. Uh, you're so humble. I, I dig that about you. I really dig that about you. Uh, so if I get the book, right, the introverts adds to the network or the one that sells, you know, we're after reading the book, you know, you went to YouTube for a lot of content, you know, have you put together, cause I didn't ask you this question in the pre-interview. Have you put together any video content, you know, maybe a platform or something where if I wanted more, I wanted more personal video, you know, do you have anything? Yeah, absolutely. Well, firstly, I mean, yeah. I learned so much from YouTube and I wouldn't be where I am today without it. So I put a ton of free content out on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok these days, Facebook. Everywhere you look, there's free content that I put out. Of course, um, the books actually come with implementation training. So for me, you know, what... Uh, what Occasionally, I'll have somebody reach out to me and say, Matt, I loved your book. It changed my life. I'm like, oh, terrific. How, um, how's the sales process? Go? Well, I don't really have a sales process like you, you highlighted yet. I'm like, okay, well, what stories are you telling, are you telling now? Is, are, you, are you finding that helpful? Well, I don't really have stories. I'm like, well, what is it that you have applied that's changed your life? No, just knowing I can sell has changed my life. I'm like, well, okay, well, I want to take you from there to implementation. So for me, in the first book, I created an implementation training that takes you through video by video for how to take the theory and put it into action. In the second book, I actually go one step further and I tell people how to practice, but then I also give a whole bunch of videos as an implementation 
presentation training on how to do that, right? And that all comes free with the book. Of course, I do have a, a program called the Rapid Growth Academy, which takes you through a nine week program that really takes you through a lot more. Because if you think that sales is just one element, networking is just one element. If you're a, you know, an introverted you know, service provider business owner, for instance, you've got to learn to, act, to connect with your passion. You have to learn how to what, create what I call a unified message. So you lead in by saying something like, I'm the rapid growth guy, as opposed to I'm a sales trainer. So people, instead of looking at you like you're one step above a scam artist because they had a bad experience with the sales trainer, they're like, oh, what's rapid growth? And they appreciate that. They want to have that dialogue. Again, there's a lot to giving value before you do that so that it works. But then taking you through how to package and price the right way in a way that stimulates purchasing behavior and right through to how to you know attract clients online so you get out of the networking room. As a matter of fact, my second book actually covers that in the last chapter. The kind of twist at the end is my whole focus is to make sure that you're a master in the networking room so you never have to go back to one. Because let's face it, the average networker, they can't, they can't articulate the value of what they offer in two to three minutes when someone's politely listening. What hope do you have in the half a second someone gives you in the virtual world, which people have needed to dominate in and failed miserably during the coronavirus? Yeah, I, but that, so you bring up a great point. I, I didn't think about asking you this question. You just pinged me on that one. And that is, what have you seen as the difference now that we've moved virtually, right? Because I'm sure when you started writing the book that was pre-pandemic, is that a safe assumption? Yeah, absolutely. Well, actually, I finished it during the pandemic. So there was a okay. little bit of rewriting that happened building in the virtual networking at the okay. same time. So let's talk about that a little bit. We'll wrap up with that. Let's talk about a little bit, you know, how has that changed? You know, what are some of the tools that people can use virtually? to kind of maybe overcome some of that introversion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, firstly, it, people are networking on platforms like LinkedIn the same way as they used to network face to face. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you had the, the what I call the transactional networker, which is generally extroverted or a really desperate introvert. Do you want to buy from me? No. What about you? What about you? What about it's horrible. That's the last thing anyone mm -hmm. wants to be. So <laughs> you see that on LinkedIn by people going, do you want to buy? Do you want to buy? They send out 200 messages a day, just hoping for the best, right? We all get that. We connect with someone and the next thing you know, they're spamming you, right? So mm -hmm. nothing's changed there. Then you've got the aimless networker, which doesn't want to be like that person. So they kind of just have these shallow conversations where they try to avoid really talking about what they do. And if they do, they, they stay very humble and they don't talk about it well, or they do what most introverts do, over-educate so the person feels like they've opened up this fire hose of information and, oh, go away. Or, sorry, no, let me think about it. It sounds great. I'll definitely get back to you. Sure, they will. And on LinkedIn, what that is, is connection. Oh, I just wanted to let you know, say hi, and hope you enjoy my content. Of course, they never do. Strategic networking is about making sure you've got the right message, you understand your market, you tell the right stories, you, you know what to say and how to frame it the right way. The great thing is when you know how to do it in the networking room, and I mean, you can, you can test that out by doing virtual networking in the back end of a lot of conferences. I know our mutual friend Gerhard does that at the, uh, the, the, the Selling Power 3.0 conference, uh, but also, there's so many other like lunch club. There's a lot of other online events where you can do like networking roulette where you get to meet and they match you up with people. So there's lots of things you can do to make sure you're articulating it well and practicing it well. And that way, when you go and do it on LinkedIn and other social platforms and, and podcast interviews as well is a great medium to get your message out. You know what to say so that you don't come across as salesy or pitchy, you come across as dynamic and passionate and engaging. I think that you know networking in the room is great practice, virtual networking roulette is great practice, but eventually you wanna leverage that. But until your message is right, I always have this saying, if you can't be the clearest, you have to be the loudest. So get it clear first, otherwise you'll be writing a blog post every day, putting out a podcast episode, pitching 100 people, and feeling horrible while doing it. If you get everything, if you get the strategy right, well, everything else is much easier, and that's why I say nine percent of all networking happens before you even walk into the room and that requires patience and discipline to actually take the time to mentally machinate if i could say through that whole process so that part i love because and i want to end on that because i think it's a good point i get spammed all the time on linkedin you know these fake conversations and i'm wondering if there are introverts behind that or in you know extroverts i've always wondered that but anyway matthew let the sales influence tribe know where to find more information about you and your new book coming out very soon
Absolutely. So um, people are welcome. My publisher hates me when I say this, but you don't need to buy my books. You can go to the introvertsedge.com forward slash networking to download the first chapter of my new book, The Introvert's Edge to Networking. Or you can go to the introvertsedge.com to get the first chapter of The Introvert's Edge. I actually say to people all the time, if you just download that chapter, it'll give you the seven step process you need to literally take what you currently say and put it inside that. You'll realize there's some things that don't fit. Throw that out. You shouldn't be saying it to customers. And then you'll realize there's some gaping holes. Usually around asking great questions, telling great stories. Fill in those gaps, you'll double your sales in the next 60 days, and then you'll really need networking because you'll be closing more leads, you'll be so excited that you'll, you'll want those leads by going out to virtual networking events, by using social media, and by doing it well. But also, just connect with me on social media. There's a ton of different content that I put out there. And check out the Introverts Edge podcast. You know, we interview a bunch of introverted titans that you'll never guess are introverted. But they, I mean, their interviews are amazing. Anyway, he's going to be, he's so humble. He doesn't want to push his book. I'm going to push his book for him. I'm going to be with the publisher. Get the book, The Introvert's Edge to Networking, and get the one to sales while you're there. Matthew Pollard, thank you for joining us. This is Victor Antonio wrapping up the Sales Influence Podcast. Again, check out Matthew's website. Check out his content. Download that first chapter. You should really just go buy the book. Save yourself a whole lot of effort. Anyway, once you do that, go to the salesvelocityacademy.com. Lastly, this is Victor Antonio with my man Matthew saying that selling ain't hard, even for introverts, when you know how. Take care. Yeah.